just wasn't clean enough execution-wise on defense. Got to be better there, but um, he did some positive things, but just not enough. Final score, Cincinnati 20, Tennessee 16. Tighten up! Welcome you to the Bet MGM studio for the Mike Vrabel Show presented by Shift 4 with the head coach. I'm Mike Keith. We are headed towards December football. It's hard to believe that it is almost December. The Titans' final November game at Nissan Stadium saw Tennessee fall to Cincinnati by a final score of 20 to 16. Mike, as you broke it down with the team yesterday when they came in, you gave them a real challenge, didn't you? Well, we just need to focus on the good, the bad, and the ugly. Uh, ask them to drop the shield, ask them to be accountable. Uh, but we got to fix mistakes. We got to go on the road and we got to take the Titans that we know and love and the ones that we've been you know, accustomed to, uh, the ones that take care of the football, uh, turn it over, play complimentary football, run the football, stop the run. You know, there, there's a lot of things that we can do better. Uh, did some good things coming out of the game, just like Kevin said there, not enough to, to win the football game. All right, let's take a look at some of the good things. Pressure early on Joe Burrow. The Titans actually stymied the Cincinnati offense early in the ball game, forcing three punts in a row to begin. Here's pressure from DeMarcus Ward. Yeah, and kind of from everybody. You, know, you see uh, David Long in the middle of the pocket. You see Mario Edwards uh, coming around the corner, and then DeMarcus up the middle. And that really gave him nowhere to go. That, that's the plan. That's the idea. Um, there's a lot of other clips in there that we didn't have the same coordination in the rush, but. You can see a guy that forces him to step up into two guys that are pushing the middle of the pocket. Really nowhere to go. Good coverage. Everybody was was getting underneath the verticals that they had on that play. Demarcus Walker, number 95, has played a lot of football in the defensive line for the Titans this year. Been productive the yep. last four or five games. Probably um, his most production that he's had um, you know, thus far in his career. His versatility is why you wanted him. Yeah, he, he's always, was this guy we always liked. He's played along the front. He's durable. Play at different spots, um, you know, and so he's showing up and, and continuing to produce, and he plays hard. All right, let's take a look at one of the X plays from the Titans passing game. This also coming in the first quarter, Nick Westbrook Akine from Ryan Tannehill. Yep, good pocket. Ryan was decisive. Uh, Nick split the safeties. Um, but, again, clean pocket in the middle, and, and Ryan steps up and is able to deliver the ball on time. You know, Nick's going to take a hit here, but he goes up and high points it, and you know, does a really nice job on third down there. Westbrook Akine, four catches for 58 yards in the game. He has become a lot more productive over the last three weeks. What's led to that, Mike? Well, I think just the overall success of our passing game and, you know, guys being where they're supposed to be quickly, uh, protection holding up, quarterback being decisive, um, you know, just making sure that we throw to the guy that's open. And, you know, Nick's been there. He's been dependable. Uh, he's been strong with the football, so you know we'll need uh, everybody's best efforts here moving forward. 3-3 three, three, the score in the second quarter when we see the Titans' touchdown play that I know Coach Mike Vrabel will be proud of, not only for the execution, but for the hustle. Yeah, well, it starts here with, you know, you see the quarterback kind of pump it to get Derek open. He kind of ran into a little bit of traffic. Bruce stays legal. He's down there blocking, hoops blocking, um, trailing's blocking, slips. You know, there's Chig blocking down the field, and then Chig's, or uh, Traylon's guy actually comes off when he slips, and you know, don't want to see anybody hammer the football out of uh, anybody's arms of ours. But it, it's a great reminder that you never know when you're going to protect the guy with the ball. Something comes out, uh, and there's Traylon. So I thought that was a great way to get him, get him his first touchdown. 69 yards is officially how long the reception is. And then the Titans recovered the fumble in the end zone with Traylon Burks. As Mike mentions, his first career touchdown as a Titan. He takes it away from Jesse Bates there in the end zone. Bates thought he had one, 
and instead it was Burks for well, a And again, you, you could run to the football 30 times and never be needed, and on the 31st time, um, you're going to have to put a fire out, and that's certainly what Traylon did. So it's a great reminder to everybody on our football team that you never know uh, when your effort is going to be the play that makes a difference. Derek, too, on the year, has already set career highs in receptions and receiving yardage, and you still have six games left to play. But that'd be great. We're going to have to have more of those. Those are um, game-changing plays. They change field position, score, X plays. Um, you know, we're just going to have to get everybody on the same page and, and be able to try to hit some more. How about some more Traylon Burks right here? This is a fantastic catch down the middle. It ends up going for 51 yards. Tannehill gives him a chance. Yeah, the safety kind of bites down on some of the intermediate stuff. And once Ryan saw that uh, the safety, you know, bit down, you know, you can see the protection. Uh, I know some, you know, Hendrickson comes uh, late inside, but a lot of protection, able to hold up, and we're able to get the ball down the field. Probably could have gotten it to him a hair sooner, but I'm nitpicking a little bit because he had gotten behind him. But just a great job of going up there and high pointing it and uh, getting an explosive gain for us. Burks for 51 yards on this play. Hendrickson's hit actually ends up being ruled uh, roughing the quarterback, which adds another 12 yards. Titans forced to kick a field goal in that situation. Let's wrap up with a couple defensive plays. Yeah, late in the game here, we're getting everybody out there and. You know, they go with the toss crack and guys are running and swarming and, you know, we just we just need to put it together a little bit. You know, we just, they got us on the one red zone drive and mistakes, missed tackles, third down conversion, third down conversion. And, and they just, they ran it in from the eight yard line, which isn't us. That's what I told the team. I said, there's a lot of things that happened, but teams running it in from the eight yard line. Uh, I can't remember when that's happened. And uh, that, that can't happen. So we just have to continue to find the resolve to get them stopped if they get down to the red zone. All right, let's see a little more of that resolve right here from the defense. One more play from those guys as they make it happen on the inside. There's a quarterback draw. It's so, a quarterback draw. You know, this is that late third down play to give us a chance. Unfortunately, you know, we got a penalty on the field goal. But guys were tuned in. You know, they had third and ten late in the game. They went to empty, saw the split safeties. Uh, he went with the check and... You know, you could see Jeffrey was ready for it, executed it, um, tackle for no gain on the, on the quarterback draw. So, you know, we just have to continue to take these keys, understand how the game is being played, what the situation is. And I thought that that was a good example of, you know, things that we can build off of. And so you show them the positive along with the negative to keep it all in perspective. Well, you have to. You have to always keep this thing in perspective. You have to find ways to improve when you win, find ways to improve throughout the season uh, when you lose. Um, have an open mind, be willing to learn, be willing to take accountability. Uh, but we show them the good, the bad, the ugly. And I've tried to do that since I got here and try to be consistent whether we're winning or whether we're losing. All right. When we come back with more of the Mike Vrabel Show, we'll talk about what's upcoming with the Philadelphia Eagles this Sunday. That and a lot more, including our epic Western genuine titan. You'll see the special teamers next. Welcome back to the BetMGM studio and the Mike Vrabel Show presented by Shift 4. If you've watched this show any at all, you know special teams is very important to head coach Mike Vrabel. And if you watch the football team, they get it. When the special teams units are on the field, those coverage units, everybody is up to watch them. That's why we feature these guys as tonight's epic Western genuine titans. And so you just gotta bring that physicality, if that's your, your specialty, or you know, speed, obviously, for some of the smaller guys. But um, the hard hitting plays, similar to what Dylan had this past week, it just sets the tone. It comes downfield. Dixon from the seven, to the 10, to the 15, to the 20. Bam! Dylan Cole! <laughs> yes, sir! <laughs> Just hit it. Cobb 
at the 16. Looking for room, gets away from Avery. Just took those pins right out from under him on an outstanding special teams tackle. Having that, that, that angry, like, aggressive mentality, uh, I, I, want to, I want to make the play type of mentality. He's right from the two. Five to the 10, to the 15, and he's down! Hassan Haskins! Love it. We love it. It gets, it gets the people hyped, and uh, defense, offense are looking, watching, and uh, starting trying to create momentum and keep momentum. Snap, set, kick is blocked. Titans can pick it up. Cole goes to get it. He can run with it. Good tackle, 5-2. Let's go. Let's go. Yes, sir. Woo! He's been booting them and, you know, having guys run down there and make plays uh, like like Dylan, like Raider, like all those guys that, that run down there and, and made, made plays in, in space. And everybody, I feel like, has contributed to that mentality of running and gunning and, and just ready to go make plays at any time. He's at the 12. He's at the 15. He is hit and melted just outside the 20-yard line. Dylan Cole! <laughs> Fun to see those guys do their thing. A lot of Dylan Cole because he was wired at Green Bay. He has 11 special teams tackles on the year. Leading the team, Hassan Haskins with 13, Joe Jones with 9, Trey Avery with 6. And it was interesting, in Sunday's game against Cincinnati, the crowd has now picked up on this. They have gotten what your special teams units do. And it was interesting to see the noise and the enthusiasm from that. It's electrifying. It's catching. Yeah, and I told him, if we're all going to do this and we're getting up for you, you better put on a show. And, uh, you know, we went down there and covered a good kickoff. Tory was a physical and aggressive. Joe split the double team. And, you know, it can make a difference. You know I mean? They, they set the table for each and every series, trying to bring them and incorporate them into the team and just so that they understand how critical their role is. And, and some guys are really embracing it. You know, we got to get these return units going. You know, we got to continue to – to hit these punts and go down there and cover them and and send messages with speed and violence. Oh, that's good stuff. And and it it really is something that people pick up on and it adds a different element that quite frankly the Titans haven't had very often. Well, I appreciate you noticing. Uh, we we have to be better, but you know I, I appreciate that from where you're sitting and your vantage point that guys are up. I mean, there's guys on offense say, hey, come on, let's get up. You know, we got to watch them and. You know, so everybody, it, that means something to me. That's Coach Mack telling me that. Yeah. He's the one that notices. You know that. You're just the, uh, you're just the, the brains of the operation. No, that's, uh, that's not true at all. You're More the- coming up on the Mike Vrabel Show presented by Shift 4. Thanks for joining us tonight. Stay with us. <laughs> Welcome back to the Mike Vrabel Show presented by Shift 4. Last Sunday's game at Nissan Stadium was the organization's second annual Playmakers game that honors women who are not just involved in football, it's women all over the community making important contributions in so many different ways. This week's Wesley Mortgage community hero is Jessica Doyle, an attorney who helps LGBTQ plus couples and families with free legal services for uncontested adoptions. Dear Jess, since the day we met almost 25 years ago, I've been all of the amazing and selfless things you do. Mentoring kids at Bethany Hills, raising funds and wrangling supplies for urgent needs. Coaching youth sports, fostering community by organizing potlucks or gatherings for hundreds of families. (sighs) Professionally, your generosity shines through your legal work as children and family advocate an ally to the LGBTQ community, and the delicate way you navigate difficult and extremely emotional legal matters. In and out of the courtroom, you help us all find family in the ways we need it. Here's what the people closest to you had to say. Jess's spirit of giving has no limits. She is a force of nature, 
an advocate for all, and a fighter for what is right. She has the biggest laughs, <laughs> and she makes people feel seen. A community influencer with a servant's heart who reminds us through her work that love makes a family. You've changed the trajectory for many Middle Tennesseans, so today we honor you as the Wesley Mortgage Community Hero. Thank you. And you and 13 of your closest friends are to go to the game. Oh, that's so fun! Oh my gosh! Getting to see kids end up in a loving home or homes that I think every kid deserves is the most rewarding part. Those rewards look really different for all kids and all families, but kind of knowing at the end of the day that what we did mattered is the best. Thank you so much. And Wesley Mortgage, this is an honor I'll cherish forever. I love these Wesley Mortgage features. Yeah, they get better each week, and this, the spirit of people in and around our community is amazing. Good stuff. Know Your Foe is next. We'll talk the Philadelphia Eagles when the Mike Vrabel Show continues, presented by Shift 4. The Mike Vrabel Show from the Bet MGM studio, presented by Shift 4. Time to Know Your Foe. And this one is a good one. It's the Philadelphia Eagles. I haven't of, seen him in a while. One of your first victories as Titans head coach. A thriller. It was a thriller. An overtime. OT thriller. It was a thriller. Couple fourth down, got to have it. Taewon Taylor with a big catch. Huge. Huge catch. Fourth and 15. Yes, sir. Our sideline. All right. Let's move Corey on. Corey Davis had a good Got to look ahead, go. coach, not look backward. That's what you say. All right. Eagles are 10-1. and one. They just beat the Packers. Best and, team in National Football League. And Jalen Hurts. Power rankings. Jalen Hurts, the quarterback. I mean, my goodness, he has been fantastic running and passing. And throwing. He's taking care of the football. Only has three interceptions. Um, you know, I mean, they're throwing some shots. They're getting it out of his hand. And, you know, like he's, you know, there's A.J. going up and make a play for him. They're running. They're design running. Um, he's running and, and scrambling. You know, he had a 60-yarder scramble last week. So, huge challenge here. All right, so that's Jalen Hurts, who certainly a candidate for Offensive Player of the Year. Miles Sanders with 900 yards rushing. You know A.J. Brown. And you know Devontae Smith from Alabama, who's having an outstanding. Ta talented skill players. Miles Sanders, um, really, really good running back. Is healthy. He's taking care of the football. Um, you can see here he'll hit anywhere. He's got great balance. Um, this, is a, this is a highly drafted running back a few years ago, and it seems like he's gotten better each and every year. Um, AJ's got great play strength, you know, turning some of these short catches into, you know, long gains. And then the route runner that Devontae is plays much bigger, you know, than what his um, weight is. He's a strong player for, for what his weight is. And on defense, it's about takeaways and pass rush, plus 13 in the turnover ratio, 36 quarterback sacks on the year, and the leading interceptor in the league in C.J. Garner-Johnson. Yeah, if you float it out there, he's going to go find it and get it. You know, they, they lead the league in interceptions. They have 23 turnovers, uh, third in the league in sacks. And, I mean, they just keep bringing guys at you, whether it's Reddick or Sweat, Fletcher Cox. You know, you can remember when Fletcher Cox used to be the guy. Sure. I mean, they've got some guys around him now. And, you know, it's um, – It'll be a huge challenge here this week. Fourth in the NFL in total offense, second in the NFL in total defense. Work to do. What are the keys to success? Well, those are next on the Mike Vrabel Show, presented by Shift 4. Nissan keys to success. Titans want to go to Philadelphia and get a win over the Eagles, so... I mean, you got, they rushed for 360 yards on Sunday. Be a good place to start. You got to stop the run, right? Would be a good place to start. Uh, quarterback design runs, um, runs obviously with Sanders, and then the other hidden yardage in the quarterback runs when they drop back to throw it, and you don't contain or you don't have coordinated rush lanes. Uh, that's something that's going to have to get better than the last time we played last week. All right, for the Titans, staying on schedule offensively is key number two. What does that mean? Well, that just means being real efficient. We can't live in third and 10, third and 12. You know, we have to continue to be efficient on first and second down and pick up first downs or have third and short. You know, really Washington 
uh, is the blueprint. They, they beat these guys in Philly, uh, caused four turnovers, but what they did was they had a bunch of third and ones, they had a bunch of short yardage opportunities that they converted, they possessed the ball, uh, and they were able to score. I like this one, especially with our genuine Titan being the special teams unit. Win the hidden yardage on special teams. Explain that. Well, it all goes into drive start. It's field position. The hidden yardage is, you know, where we start. The net punting, um, the, how we cover kickoffs, make sure we're catching every punt, making great decisions, um, it, you know, leaving it in if we're two or three yards deep in the end zone instead of trying to bring it out. Uh, all these things can lead and add up to yards that at the end of the day, you know, sways the field position battle. It's December football. It's your time. It's going to be critical. Take care of it, win the hidden yardage, and, uh, and run the football. For Mike Vrabel, I'm Mike Keith. Thanks for joining us for the Mike Vrabel Show presented by Shift 4.